five, four, three, two. Welcome back. That was uh, that was a little weak. I mean, I didn't have the background music. It's your fault. So okay. <laughs> we thought we'd try and do something because all of us are going stir crazy. We all miss sports. We all miss baseball. None of us have Corona. Thank God, especially some of us on the front lines. Thanks, Jeff. Um, life is crazy right now. And we kind of just want to take a break from the crazy and just try and resume a little bit of normalcy. Sorry, it's been, what, like three months since we last recorded it? One month. It's been longer than one month. Get out of here. Okay, I'll go back and look at it. It feels like I literally could have carried and birthed a child since we last recorded. Physically a- impossible. <laughs> Um, in any case, so we're doing a little bit of a, a round table, something different that we haven't done before. Um, we've kicked this idea around for a little while and we're finally coming to fruition with it because basically we all have plenty of time to do so now. Um, so with us tonight, as always, I got my co-host Ed and we also have some special guests. Some, you know, one, you know, uh, some, you may not, um, we have Clay Snowden of Locked On Reds. Say hi, Clay. Hey, guys. How's it going? What's up, Clay? Welcome back. Happy Bye. to have you again. Um, we have one of CPD's finest, Jeff Howell, friend of the show. Hey, hey Jeff. What's going on? And we also have um, a guy that Ed and I went to high school with and my best friend uh, who – Happens to be a big Reds fan. Ron Jackson. Welcome to the show, Ron. Happy to be here, fellas. About time. I don't know if you ever actually called in before. So just he tried it once, once, had some once. technical difficulties, and, you know, just got fed yeah. up with it. I was done with it. <laughs> it was like Ed. episode three. Yeah, I, mean, I got <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway, um, we have some questions prepared, some questions that are not. As always, Ed's a wild card, so... Thank you for taking the time out of your quarantine to join us in listening to our Little Reds roundtable, even though currently there are not sports. However, um, first thing I wanted to bring up, I know it's not a question that we fed you beforehand, but how do you pronounce his name? Fauci? Is it Fauci? Dr. Fauci? Dr. Fauci? Fauci. Fauci? Is it Fauci? So I believe he is saying that we could have baseball in front of empty stadiums as early as July 4th. So sold. I, <laughs> I was right? gonna say, what's everybody's thoughts on July Fourth empty stadiums? At least getting some semblance back of baseball. Are are we talking empty stadiums, as in like the stadiums in the respective cities, or empty stadiums in in Arizona? Well, Florida? well, Florida is out of the race um, as I mean, of today. I don't care. To be to be clear, I don't care where they play. Correct. Arizona is the only state that is still in the runnings. I guess they decided not to try and file for essential jobs for Florida for baseball. Well, I don't know how you fit 30 teams in Arizona. I mean, I, I guess high was, schools, colleges, et cetera. Yeah, that just seems like a complete nightmare, honestly, with trying to schedule it. I feel like there would be – too many games in a row, you'd be playing stacked games, double headers, night games followed by day games, just trying to squeeze it all in. They would have to go to a very obscure schedule, which at this point you've really just got to ask yourself if that's really worth it, worth it or fair to the players. So, hey, I know that you all train and prepare for this. We're going to throw something completely different at you um, because we need to make money off of it. I just personally think – I mean, I love baseball as much as any of you all do. I want to see it happen as soon as possible, too, but I also want it to be baseball and not to be some, you know, different version, shortened, maybe what – I mean, I even heard maybe doing seven innings if they have to play multiple games. and like that. They do that in minor leagues if they have double headers. But, like, I mean, I don't want to change certain things about it just to try to squeeze in a season – um, I'd rather just see it uh, played a different way. But, hey, I mean, who knows what tomorrow even holds with this virus. So, I mean, I get it. That's the route they have to go. But I would like to at least have a little bit more structure. 
Like, would you I'm rather you, see it? Like, would you rather see it be played in the like wait till each state is opened up to to play in respective cities so that the, I mean, at this point, if you're they're going to try and squeeze in as many games as possible, they're going to have to do the double headers and you know stack games in the weeks with maybe one day only one day off throughout the entirety of the of the season. Right. Yeah, that's the thing, and different laws in different states and. All that I mean, it's way above my head and way right. above my understanding. I just think trying to squeeze all those teams into Arizona and trying to get it through and trying to make it work. I mean, to me, it just seems like it would be a nightmare, a complete headache trying to figure it all out. Um, but then again, you know, there's people that are getting paid to figure that type of stuff out. I'm glad it's not me, honestly, but um, I would probably rather see it longer to get a better idea of where we stand with this virus honestly because right now I just don't feel like there's nearly enough information to it's when you start putting dates on it uh, they talked about this on the Dan Patrick show like putting a date on something is just not a good idea because you don't know what's going to come and when you Man. can't promise that you can't do it and you have to push it back that's going to cause more worry and more scare than it should just say we're not gonna there's no schedule <clears throat> right now we're looking to get back you know when you start setting dates and deadlines and stuff like that is when people get their hopes up and then they get let down and then you're like wait you know what's going on it's just it's just unnecessary to me to put these dates that they just like fourth of july like they just picked the holiday weekend like we're gonna play baseball then somewhere somehow it's like um where why you know like so i i really don't know but that's just my thoughts on it so I, I totally agree with you that I don't want baseball to become something different than what it is, right? So, but I'm also down for something that looks like back-to-backs and, you know, whatever, kind, because we, many of us grew up playing some form of backyard baseball, and that's where the love of the game really grew from, right? So, I mean, if it's going to look anything like that, count me in as long as you're not taking away from the product. And and by that, by that I mean, I don't want a seven – inning game I, I don't want you know some some shortened version of, of what this this great game is but if it does look a, a little manic at times I, I, I'm kind of okay with it um, understanding that player health and safety and all that should be protected um, but I'm a fan I'm, I'm a fan I want to see these guys play ball I like that I mean the the Trevor Bauer thing was pretty cool but yeah, you're right. I I just want to see baseball again. The wiffle ball, the wiffle ball game. Yeah, that was that was pretty fun. <laughs> I don't know. I'm with you, Ron. Like, I I feel like at some point you have to protect the integrity of the game. Um, but I feel like that integrity of the game only goes to a certain extent right now, just kind of with everything going on. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously we all want sports, and you know Dana White was trying to do the same thing with UFC, trying to buy an island and trying to have fighters go out to an island, get tested, what have you. And I know that MLB has already entered into the biggest test study as of right now. Um, and they're talking about that we could have sports back if you're doing one test a week. Um, personally, I don't think that's enough. If you're actually going to be having physical contact with people, um, I mean, think of how close, you know, I mean, if we're talking about viruses being spread by breath, um, you know, how, how close if you're, you know, holding a guy at first base, um, you know, how close is the base runner and, and the first baseman? You know, they're always having contact or like conversations and what have you, but, you know, I mean, there's only so much you can do, like with your glove over your hand, covering your mouth to try and protect that. Um, yeah. At some point, you know, people are going to touch the ball that's already been touched by the pitcher and he's doing God knows what on the ball as far as, you know, spitting on it or, you know, licking his hands and then get gripping the ball because that's what he's always done. Think of how gross the dugouts are. I mean, you have sunflower seeds, you have gum, you have, chew you have spit you have god knows what they the people have talked about how slimy and disgusting dugouts are after just one game oh, you got I, that on the bottom you know you got that on the bottom of your cleats and everything so i don't know i mean baseball's kind of a, a tough sport in comparison to the other sports just in how gross everything coming out of the players mouths are over the roughly two to two and a half to three hours of regular play I think a lot of that goes back to what Clay was saying. With it, I mean, it's a it's a very difficult thing to do because you're going to have to bring in every everybody that is going to be involved. So you're looking at players, coaches, uh, umpires, 
security Absolutely. security those, those folks that are going to be involved you're going to have to bring them all in get every one of them tested with a lead up time and they're all going to need to be quarantined mm -hmm. right separate from each other because if one player or umpire or security shows up to work for the at the beginning and it, and it tests positive anyone that's had contact with that person it's now going to need to be quarantined two weeks and you're pushing it back another two weeks for any, I mean, God, God forbid, like if half the, you know, starting lineup is around one guy and now that whole team is out. So then they can't play games. Well, think of how big the size of the dugout is. How are you supposed to maintain six feet? Well, in a dugout? Well, I mean, at that point, at that point, like I if, guess you, in a if you bring everyone in, test them all, everyone is negative, Right. You have to sequester everyone, and they can't have contact with anybody outside. I mean, that that that's families. Families can't have contact. They they they're gonna have. I mean, you have these players. If you start in July and you think, okay, so then it, even if you try and squeeze everything in, you're gonna be playing into at least November, right? So yeah. you're looking at these guys being sequestered from their families that long to play baseball. I mean, as much as I love baseball, I mean, I don't wish that on anybody to have to be like sequestered from their family to, to you know play a sport at the same time we all do whatever it takes to put you know make sure the bills are paid put food no, on the table and all that yeah so no, it depends on what kind of level of sacrifice you're willing to make really yeah i mean i heard today that vince mcmahon is on the board to decide when when things come back for the government so i think we'll all be pretty safe with vince mcmahon <laughs> hey he so just much. pulled off wrestlemania <laughs> exactly. This guy just, recorded. Yeah. Well, you know, happens. It was empty. It was empty. So, I guess uh, I don't know. I mean, if they're playing in empty stadiums, though, I, I don't know if you actually sit in the dugout or if everybody sits in like the bleachers in the first couple of rows to keep their six feet. <laughs> I don't know how it even looks. But <laughs> in Korea, they had robots to act as the fans, holding up signs and cheering. Stop it! That's not a thing. That's a true story. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, I heard about that. Wasn't it um, <laughs> Bonilla, one of our former pitchers? Wasn't he involved in that game? It, I think so. I just heard about it on the radio. Yeah, there's like robots holding up sands and, oh, and whistling. Get out of here. <laughs> oh. Telling Joey Votto that he, they remember when he used to be good. Unreal. All right. Well, um, I don't even know what to make of any of that. <laughs> so <laughs> we do have some questions that we want to talk about. I know I kind of threw a curveball you guys to start. Um, so looking back on 2019, since that's the last real baseball that was actually played, um, does, any, does everybody have a favorite memory or a game from that season? I mean, I'll start. My, I, my favorite, I mean, I, I, I actually couldn't come up with just one. I actually had my top three, and I'm sorry if I'm taking anybody else's. So I'll give the two and three afterwards if nobody else mentions them. But my number one is just opening day. Um, seeing Derek Dietrich in Ohio, you know, he's from Cleveland, and doing what he did on opening day with the go-ahead home run, it was – I mean, you all remember how you felt when that home run was hit. Like, it was something. And it's opening day, and, you know, I know we were all hyped about opening day. All of us probably at some point or another trying to figure out, can I go this year, can I not go this year? I don't know. The party's ballistic. I want to be there. Um, and unfortunately, that we don't even know if that's even going to be a thing at all in 2020. Um, but yeah, that was, I don't know, my favorite memory of 2019. Yeah, um, I had an opening day on there. Um, it was my first opening day, actually. And it was just everything you could ever imagine it being perfect weather and everything. But kind of um, since you said opening day, I was just thinking, um, Kind of next line, kind of like the underrated, sneaky, good part of the season, sweep, sweeping the Astros. I feel like a lot of people forgot the Astros sweep. It was like kind of like a midweek, I think like a Tuesday, Wednesday type week. Um, Sorry, I was just banging a trash can. <laughs> so that, <laughs> Real so talk, the Astros that was a trash sweep can. was great. But then also you got to think of the time um, – Aquino came on on and oh, yeah. you know, playing the Cubs and you know there was late season potential playoff talk or just that feeling and buzz around the team that late in the season something that we've just really been lacking for several seasons now so just that and just 
you know, hearing people talk about the Reds, you know, you're out at a bar, you're talking to your buddies. Hey, man, you have you heard about what the Reds are? Have you heard about this Aquino guy? Just kind of excitement in the summer for your baseball team. It's sad but true. We haven't had much of that. So that was, to me, kind of like the highlights. Um, and, of course, just every time we played the Pirates, knowing, like, oh, man, is someone going to beat the shit out of somebody else? Like, I hope so. <laughs> so, I mean, Clay, that – the Astros series sweep did that didn't that take on greater meaning after everything kind of came out as like oh man like let's think back how obviously how great that team was but I mean just to beat the cheaters right something like that I mean nobody saw that coming it always feels good to beat the Astros just knowing you know we used to play them so often when they're in the division then they go to a different division and win it and just like god man something about the Astros I just hate them I've never in my life been an Astros <laughs> fan, so I don't even know what they're about, really. But, um, yeah, I mean, beating the Astros was just, like, kind of a – it's amazing to me, like, how kind of just, like, you know, nobody really talks about it much whenever they look back on the season. I mean, you see it mentioned here and there, but, like, that was awesome. I mean, like, the games were great and everything. Um, I will, just because it's on the top of my head, the low point of the season was I was watch, stayed up late to watch the A's game when we got uh, no hit or – Oh, jeez. My fears of yeah. all people. Yeah, I stayed up late to watch that one, and I, I was like, well, shit. You know, this is – the next day at work. So, so – Go ahead. Uh, no, I was – my uh, – I, I, it it took me a while to to kind of come up with something. I, I've yeah, you know, I've been to. I think the the first opening day that I missed was my freshman year of college because I couldn't make it back. Um, and since then, I've missed several. But uh, so opening day is always up there. But I, what are you shaking your head for? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's like you got real people with responsibilities or something being CPD. Yo, man. Since I've been on <laughs> CPD, I've only made it to a couple. I was just uh, messing, man. Go ahead. Know, uh, but the the game, I, it was, I think it was uh, right at the beginning of July against the Brewers where Puig scored from first base oh, in yeah. the 11th inning. That I mean – yeah, so he was only here part of the year, right? I mean, but that dude embodies literally everything that you could ever want in a baseball player. And before he came here, everybody always said, like, you you don't want him on your team. You know, he's, he's all about himself. He doesn't care about anybody else. Like, he just wants to show everybody up. He's going to you know, hit home runs, flip the bat 100 feet in the air, disrespect everybody on the field. But that guy right there is who you want on your team. And that play embodied everything that is Puig. I mean, he he gets to third base and the ball barely skips away across the infield. And he's like, you know what? I'm gonna and then the Reds were only like, I think they were like three and a half games out then. They they got to like three and a half games out. They they win three of four from the Brewers that week. And and they're right in it. And you're like, this something could happen here. And unfortunately <laughs> it, it didn't but it didn't end up manifesting the way that you know we would have all wanted it to but that that moment in the season like i it it's the, the top top for me so so going off the the puig thing and i think i need to turn my volume down a little bit um i think the reason why this is probably one of my favorite games of the season is just because i saw the the replay uh with the guy doing the 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 ad lib over top of it. Um, but the, uh, the fight against the pirates when Pui got traded away and didn't know he got traded away. So he was still fighting for everybody. <laughs> was probably the funniest, at least part of the season when I'm like, wait, dude, you just got traded. You get, don't, don't. That was, that was the Garrett fight. That wasn't yeah, like even the Puig fight. That was the Garrett fight. Yeah. Right. Even the Garrett fight. So, so that actually goes perfectly. So my favorite game, because again, the, the Reds, they, unfortunately they were very exciting, but they didn't go anywhere last year. So, um, but the Amir Garrett game versus the Pirates, uh, that, that was it, man. So just, so it's been, so it had been such a long time prior to this year before I, since I'd felt 
the kind of energy that you want your team to have. Um, so like thinking back to when they were, oh, okay, sorry, uh, when they were competitive and that they had a, a competitive edge about them and, and things like that, but it felt like they lost that under Price. Now, I'm, that's not anything against Ryan Price, but just saying with David Bell coming in, I felt immediately this year, like they had the, the energy and, and some something to them. So when Garrett just was totally fed up with the fact that baseball, Major League Baseball had not stepped in to control the Pirates, he's like, okay, all right, if this is what, you know, where we are, I'm in. So just him with a glove to his face, <laughs> having that conversation and just throwing, ripping down the glove and going, not if giving remember, about what was going to happen next. That was it for me. If you remember, Brian Price had been ejected that game. And so it was the, um, the, the Bell, David Bell. Yeah. Right. He, oh yeah. Sorry. Whoa. <laughs> David Bell had. Ejected well, that. Yeah. Sorry about that. And uh, he had been ejected. And it was just that backup coach, and Amir's basically telling him, like, I'm going after him. I'm going after him right now. <laughs> uh, he just, like, motioned to the bullpen like, or the, to the bench, like, uh, can we get another guy out here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pats him on the ass and says, all right, buddy, go for it. Like, he didn't know what to do. Didn't do John Boy, did John Boy do a thing on that one? Yes, that's mm -hmm. what I saw. That thing was that, was that was hilarious. John Boy nailed it in every sense. <laughs> um. Yeah, that was uh that was my number three. Um, number two would have been the Puig taking on like that that one picture that they got yeah. of Puig oh, taking on yeah, everyone yeah. in yeah. Pittsburgh yep. on the first fight after Dietrich watched it go into the hanging river, <laughs> <laughs> looking like uh, Jeff Van Gundy in the yep. of Morning. <laughs> Tucker's wife is on Twitter going, oh, oh no no no. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, too. But no, it was it was a lot of good memories with this team. Like, and that was the thing. Like, I was thinking about other games too. Like, there's definitely some honorable mentions as far as like all the different jerseys and the different, oh, yeah. yeah, just Dietrich showing off. Dietrich and Lorenzen having like the gun off. Um, yeah. Well, Loren Lorenzen is just uh, that dude is a freak. Yes, <laughs> freak of the and and probably one of the nicest people I've ever met. Wow. Super Christian too. I mean, like. Super nice guy, super nice guy. That was um, that was so, hilarious. But you had like Dietrich with like the Fu Manchu that he painted on in the one game where they had the blues on, or the um, the beekeeper game. The beekeeper, beekeeper game, game is another yeah. one when all the bees were <laughs> in yeah. the stadium for some unknown reason. <laughs> like there's just so many things about this season that was so like just off the wall weird. I don't know if it was just 150 years that we're just like, all right, all the freaks are coming out this year. Derek Dietrich leading the way. Um, I don't know. It was, it was a really strange season. Uh, even though like we weren't even in contention at the end, I felt so entertained all year. Um, I yeah. don't know. It was, it was weird. Special mention also to Marty's last game. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah that's another thing. Yeah. But, oh, I mean, yeah. I can't listen to that sign off again. I know. I know. Which didn't even happen to be the last game of the year. Right. Right. Cause uh, then they, they went, they, they went out of town after that. And he right. was, he never, he was right. like, no, nah, not, not me. Who the hell wants to go to Pittsburgh to begin with? So he just said, <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Uh, I love that you live in Kentucky and you still say that. <laughs> Speaking of COVID, um, in Pittsburgh. How about the people from Pennsylvania coming down to Ohio to get, take our alcohol since they shut down all the liquor stores? Can't blame them. <laughs> that, no, I mean, I'm, I'm not mad at anybody. Yeah. Well, now you have to show ID at a liquor store. <laughs> what? So, I mean, you should have to do that you anyway, Ed. Come on, man. Pretty sure that's... <laughs> okay, that's a good point. But they need to check in the <laughs> from Ohio. Not... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Always check ID at the liquor store. All right, so in your time as a Reds fan, what is your favorite season? I'll go ahead and start on that one. Um, I had to think about that, right, because it was the, the walk-off game, which was freaking amazing. Um, but, yeah, but I think my favorite season, um, even though it was not a very good season and not a winning season, but was the All-Star Game season. 
because of all the hype and exactly all the hype and then um, just there was a lot more baseball in Cincinnati at that point. I mean, going down to the uh, Duke Convention Center and is that what it's called now? No, I can't remember. But going down to the yeah. Convention Center and for Fan Fest and then just everything that was going on around it, home run derby, celebrity game, um, all that stuff. I think that was just like a really awesome season to experience in Cincinnati. You didn't even mention Todd Frazier. Well, I mean, that part of it made it even better. I mean, because I remember s- sitting on the couch, and Parker's like one years old, two years old, something like that, and I'm trying not to scream. I just got home from school, and I'm trying not to <laughs> scream. He's about to jack the winning home run, and I'm just like, and just, you know, I mean, just it was freaking amazing. That's the closest that I felt to, I mean, I was around for the 90 World Series, but not, I don't remember it, um, to a World Series game that i that i've experienced so that the all-star season me my wife and and another friend we went down to um moreline to watch mike and mike the mike and mike show when they were in town so like we had to leave the house at like three or four in the morning but it was a it was an awesome experience i mean i i didn't have that on my list of, of favorite teams but i mean that was that was pretty special that was pretty special yeah, for me, um, I was thinking about this a lot, and I really like those years when, like, 2010, when you had, like, you know, some of the big-time players kind of breaking in onto the scene. Um, you know, some of the prospects were coming up, and just, you know, they, it started to gel, started to come together, where, you know, you've heard of the, you know, the Johnny Cuetos and stuff coming up through the system, the Vados, Bruce's, whatnot. It all just was starting to come together in the playoffs and Bruce's home run. I mean, all that type of stuff. Those um, two seasons when their playoffs were both great. But, like, as a historical, like, um, the 1990 season, the wire-to-wire season, I mean, Larkin, Davis, you had so many great names, players, the whole swagger, the nasty boys. I mean, I, I was – um, not born yet, so I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I was a 93, so I wasn't exactly around for it, but man, I have watched every freaking YouTube video you can find about any of that. I've read books. I've done it all. Um, can you count that, Hyatt? Ends are they trying to add it up? <laughs> I was seven. I was watching him do it, too. <laughs> yeah, so the 1990 in terms of a historic year um, is my favorite to follow. But, yeah, the playoff years were, were really great. I wore out. I had a, a VHS of Wire to Wire. Yeah. I, I believe it's uh, This Week in Baseball, Wire to Wire. Oh. And I wore that VHS <clears throat> out growing up. I was born in 85. So I was – Six. Oh, uh, huh? Six. No, no, no. no. I, was, I, was, I was still five. Five, Ed. It was 1990. Jesus. <laughs> there he is coming. And really, yeah. I was only four because I wasn't born to the end of 85. That doesn't matter. But I, I do agree that season is awesome as far as – I mean, I, I wasn't really old enough to truly remember, like, everything about it. Um, but 2012 – Though it ended uh, in a in a bad manner, um, you know, I w- we had my wife and I had the, that was like the third year. It was the third year we had season tickets, um, not full season tickets. It was like the twenty game package or whatever. But we were out in the bleachers, um, and so we got bleacher seats and we were there for the playoff games. I was able to get off work. Uh, and go to two of the three that were here. And it, the atmosphere there is – the only thing I can compare it to is the Home Run Derby yeah. when, I, when we were there for that. And it, same sort of electricity, but just a different feeling being there for – I mean, you coming back from San Francisco, and you're like, this is in the bag. Like, there's no way – that we lose three games in a row. Like we there's, it's just, it can't happen. Like look at who you've got on the field here. This is like the perfect storm. 
of we're going to do this. And, uh, and then it was all bad, but yeah, you, know, you look at like what happened out in San Francisco that year, you know, was it Cueto gets hurt and yeah, then Blake, Latos had to come in. and then Latos is like, put me in coach. Like, you know, whatever anybody's thoughts are on Latos as a, like outside of being a baseball player. He wears women's and, lingerie. There's and, a lot of those. When he, when he played for the Reds, he was good. Yeah. I mean, he was really good. And that was the guy you wanted on the mound there. I mean, well, second line. So you didn't. But yeah, he – that just that whole – I mean, that season right there is, is one that's like, can we please get that back and, and then maybe finish it off? <laughs> you know, you're like – you're right there. Like, I'm tired. I'm, I'm sick and tired of, like, my Cardinals friends that are like – you know, look at all this awesome stuff we've done and these great parades we've been to. Like, you know, can we can we do that here? Like, I'll work a traffic post for it. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll stand down there and direct traffic. I'll probably have to, but yeah, yeah, that was a that was just great. Was yeah, just, there's something else happened there, but I forgot. So, um, I, I'm I'm feeling suddenly some kind of way understanding that I'm definitely the oldest person here accurate so, but, but almost what that, 40 <laughs> what the, 37 i'm 37 almost what 40. that means though if only for a couple more weeks um so but what that means is i do have actual memories of the 1990 world series team i remember sitting in my my parents living room um with a broom right so just ready for them to sweep the A's. And it was just incredible. Now, I don't have many memories of that season, of the wire-to-wire -wire season. I, I can't tell you that I watched a ton of games, but I did watch the World Series, and, and I did have that room in my hand. It was, it was – it's the only championship I've been alive for, you know. Uh, so, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So – uh, but outside of that, um, the 2012 season was also very, very cool to me. Um, I, I feel like that 2012 season, um, honestly, okay, let me take a step back because going back to the 2010 year, um, that was the first year I I'd, I'd recently bought a, a house and Aaron was, was my roommate. And I remember us sitting there watching so many of those games. I, I swear we watched like as many games as we possibly could. Um, and just like, Clay, like you were saying, man, just the energy that was building, you felt like something was coming and something was going to happen with this group of guys. And, and I, I, they, they almost made it happen, but obviously San Francisco happened. So, uh, yeah. but there was something special about that season too. Um, but that 1990 year, I, I just, you know, having that, that broom, uh, with me incredible I do remember a little bit of the 90 World Series I remember my mom no I remember my dad and all his friends from the neighborhood left to go down a party on Fountain Square and then next morning all the mailboxes have been bashed off the post and they <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it was them well I don't know I mean I'm with Jeff that 2012 season I mean that was my favorite season. Just there were so many guys here that were, I don't, I mean, it's hard not to go back to like the 2010 where I think that was the year Johnny Gomes was here and, and he was something else. Yeah. Um, just out partying after we won the championship in his bathrobe with a cigar. Like I feel like they let that camera run way too long and they shouldn't have <laughs> while all the players were getting hammered and showing up like, like Johnny Gomes, for instance. Um, but no, outside of that, I mean, 2012, I mean, you go back and think about everything that happened in San Francisco and you go back to the Johnny Gomes oblique injury and it just goes back to the Cincinnati curse, man. It's like if Johnny Gomes doesn't get the oblique injury, if Carson Palmer doesn't get the knee injury, if Andy Dalton doesn't get the hand injury, if Joe Mixon doesn't Adam, drop the ball. <laughs> well, if you Kenyon Martin it, doesn't break his leg. I was getting yeah. there too. Yeah. I mean, it just goes back to how much heartbreak can one city like they <laughs> Cleveland wants to talk about how they're the worst city ever and how they never win a champion. Get out of here, man. Like we've had so many championships taken from us, I feel like anyway, by these 
I'm trying very hard not to swear in the ways that I want to swear, but these, these injuries are terrible. I just almost dropped a GD and an F. Um, but no, I mean, it's just, these injuries are terrible. You know, it's, it's like, when can we catch a break? Like Boston won out of the four major, major sports, not counting even college. Boston wins like 15 out of 30 championships in like a seven year period or whatever it was. It, it just seemed like, I mean, I'm just making up stats at this point, and that's fine. But, um, I mean, it felt that way. Like, when do we catch a break? Like, we, we just we, – we break. We don't catch a break. We just break. And that's what it felt like. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of good memories in that season because, you know, every time Matt Lato took the ball, every time – and, again, I'm not a huge fan of him as a person. I want to make that very clear. Um, but – He's he was a great pitcher that year and not since ever honestly. So you don't want me to try to get him on the show? No, uh, again, oh, he wears women's lingerie and beats women. Uh, Aaron, Aaron, it's not, it, it sounds like you've been wanting to get this off your chest for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's that picture that Ed has right above the where we actually record, and I keep telling him to take it down. Oh, I did take it down. It's gone. I'm trying Finally, to sell. Good, good. You're not going to get anything for it, bud. But like no, I mean, um, outside of all that, though, um, that was a great season. Um, I'm kind of with uh, some of the younger guys. I was only six years old when everything happened with the wire to wire season. I remember it. I remember, like, I don't remember a whole lot of things with my dad as a kid growing up, um, unfortunately, just with him kind of being just not a talker. Uh, but I remember watching sports with my dad. That was what we did. And I remember watching games with my dad. And I just remember, like, his off he made the weirdest sounds out of his yeah. mouth when he was excited and it was just like and i'm by that i mean just like every time something good would happen Wahoo! or literally he would say <laughs> things like that like it just didn't make sense the, the noises that are coming out of his face um but no that was a that was a great year and i remember just being excited with him i don't remember a thing of the games um i remember eric davis but i don't remember really watching eric davis I remember jose rijo but i don't remember really watching jose rijo um you know i mean those are the kind of things that i remember and i remember that we celebrated together and i remember jumping around the living room together but i don't remember anything outside of that really um again six years old so um it's cool to have those memories anyway because that's again as somebody else said tonight it's all i got so yeah let's stick on the memories part and uh what has been your favorite memory at the ballpark and so it could be any ballpark right it could have been uh what was it riverfront slash synergy field slash u.s bank field or something like that um or great american or any other ball ballpark you know maybe the, that that um, that Applebee's you had um, in no? Hey, hey I... we're never talking about Applebee's. <laughs> in Milwaukee, <laughs> we, <laughs> Milwaukee me and my buddy Trap um, me and Trap show up in Milwaukee we're like yeah we'll grab a bike to eat around the stadium show up nothing around the stadium so we go inside it's like what are we going to eat there's a freaking Applebee's the only reason why we go is because our beers are like actually the Applebee's price beers. Two dollars. So we were drinking beers at Applebee's, had mediocre ribs. And then the next game, we go to the next night, we go back to the Applebee's. We didn't <laughs> By then, the second day, we had drink a lot more. And we were just like showing up to the ballpark. Oh, shit, man. We forgot to eat again. Oh, let's go back to Applebee's. It'll be funny. No. It was a terrible decision. But sorry, go on. That's not my favorite memory. Uh, since I asked a question, I'll start first on this one. Um, I had to think about this one because it was a toss-up. Um, so I went to um, – it was before they inducted Pete into the Hall of Fame. Um, it was like a Pete Rose – like a just a, I don't know, remembrance game or something. It was on 9-11. It wasn't on 9-11, but it was after 9-11. I just remember the date was 9-11 because they did a ceremony. Um, I went to that with my dad. We had um, champion club seats where everything was free to eat. And so if you guys know me, that was a great game for me. Um, but I think my favorite memory at the ballpark was back at Old, Old Riverfront, I guess. And a neighbor had just given us um, – what, what was the lowest level seats? Was that green seats? Blue seats. 
blue seats had given us blue seats because it was raining all day. And he's like, I'm not going. Call your dad, see if he wants to go with you. And I'm like, okay. <clears throat> uh, my dad was at work. And we went down there, and it was against the Atlanta Braves. And I took my glove because I thought I was going to catch a ball. I didn't. Um, but all the Braves were out signing autographs uh, for everybody hey. along the line. What was – is he gone? Um, and I had I got autographs from Chipper Jones, um, a bunch of dudes, and none of the Reds were out signing autographs. And this is back when Marge Shot was still alive and Marge Shot still owned the team. She comes out of the dugout with um, Shotzi and comes out and sees there's no Reds players out there. And you can just tell, like, she had this look on her face. She goes back in. All of a sudden, here comes all the players running out of the dugout to sign autographs for all the fans. Uh, she must have really laid into them about that. But that was, like, my first time getting an autograph. And then she signed my glove and signed it as Shotzi or whatever. Um, but that just sitting that close to the field and thinking I would never have those seats, um, even though it was pouring down rain, probably one of my favorite memories at a ballpark. Are you tell me that your favorite memory is not getting the Mad Latos autographed baseball. I just want to confirm that. This was a gift. Whoa. <laughs> this was a gift. I have a buddy who works at the ballpark and – this is back in 2012 or yeah, 2012 when everybody loved Matt Latos. And I was like, dude, I got it. Oh, that's another great story too. Uh, but I was like, I, you got one too. I'm Browning. Oh, that's up there too. Um, but um, yeah. Anyways, I told a buddy, I was like, I have to have a Matt Latos autograph ball. Can I give you a ball to put in your desk in, t- in case he walks into your office? And he got this from the authentic guy for me for my birthday for like pennies. But I'll go ahead and uh, do mine. I really don't. I've I've been to tons of baseball games. I've never been to a super cool <clears throat> event, baseball game type thing where something awesome happened. Um, so I'll actually just throw in. Y'all are gonna love this. I go to a ton of Louisville Bats games. Favorite baseball experience: Louisville Bats game. Deanna Navarro, obscure former Red, hit a walk-off grand slam. That's all I got for you. <laughs> Who's a catcher, right? Yeah. 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 Catcher hitting a walk-off. That's awesome. Hey. They were all, – all 92 fans were there to cheer them on, too. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite memory at Great American is um, probably watching – uh, Ramon Hernandez had a walk off one of the first couple games of the season. I don't know if it was, I don't believe it was opening day. I think it was opening night, maybe. It was opening day. Yeah. Was it opening day? Yeah. Yeah. Then I guess that like, was when I was there for. Um, it was, yeah, that was crazy. Or maybe he did it. Did he do it two nights in a row? I feel like I was at a night game. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it was because it started at four and it was dark already. I don't remember, but. I don't know. It was uh, that was my favorite memory. 2011. It was opening day. All right, smart. Thing. I have my computer. I get it. I'm on your phone. It's fine. My um my favorite memory at any of their stadiums. I've only been to one opening day, and it was 2007. So I mean, maybe I should go to more opening days. They won. Uh, <laughs> Adam Dunn hit a couple. Um, long balls. It was, I mean, it was, it was a great day if I remember correctly. Um, it was just, so that, that was, that was the one season I've ever had, um, season tickets. So, um, got tickets of course to opening day included with that. And that's, it was, it was great. It was great, man. So, uh, I mean, I've got a lot, but I can narrow it down. I mean, the all-star game, itself that that season the all-star game it was neat to be there and to say that i attended the all-star game but the home run derby (laughs) and i and i say this anytime the question gets posed on twitter um every year during the home run derby since i tweet the video out and todd frazier has liked it all but one year um (laughs) uh, him winning the home run derby and being there and I was with my wife, and the, the stadium's packed, obviously, because it's 
All-Star Weekend, it's Home Run Derby, everybody wants to be there. We weren't in any position to catch a home run ball. We were up on the first base side all the way at the top, like probably 30 rows from the top. Um, but being up there and witnessing it and being a part of it and feeling like the the energy of the stadium as people were like, Todd Frazier is going to win the home run derby. Like, this this is incredible. Yeah. And, and it was. And I didn't have a voice for like a week and a half. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you – the video is on my Twitter account, and I did recently tweet it back out again because I was feeling sad and <laughs> baseball's not going on. But you can hear me screaming, and then my voice – like, you can, you can pretty much pinpoint when my voice goes – goes away like the, I mean, when we were at the the all-star game the next day it was like you know my, my throat was burning I couldn't I mean it was just kind of the all-star game after that was very lackluster compared to what you know what happened the night before and that was if I remember, if I remember yeah. we were all like thinking that he might actually lose it because like you only have like three or four pitches left to, to he didn't. It. He didn't. He didn't have a whole lot of. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of time left there. Well, and it was it, before the time limit, wasn't it? Yeah. No. Uh, I want to say. I don't think it was the first year of the time limit. Yeah, wasn't that the first year of the? It was. Maybe second year of the. Was it his dad pitching to him? It was his brother. 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 His brother. Yeah. And then he did yeah. the U.C. afterwards. Yeah. And he, I mean, and if you you know follow Todd for I mean, that. That's also one of those guys that, I mean, that's that's a real good dude right there. Yeah, I actually have a question to make about that. I did not get to watch the Home Run Derby that year or the majority of the baseball season. Um, I missed like two months of it. I was uh, working at a fly fishing lodge in Maine in the middle of nowhere in the woods and didn't have internet didn't have TV or anything, so I couldn't even get updated, or I, I didn't have my phone. Like, I would. You shouldn't even admit that. You should be fired from Locked On Reds. Off, <laughs> off the grid for two months, and I was like, I just came back and like got all the updates. I was like, so it was overwhelming trying to like catch up on. This <laughs> I mean, baseball. I mean, is fly fishing season like a, a very thing? narrow window that you have oh, to be there during that point? Or? <laughs> I was there um, a summer during college, so it was a summer job. I was there, long story short, but, um, yeah, I missed a ton of baseball. But whenever I would travel, um, which is like once every couple of weeks or once every other week, I would uh, log on to someone else's Wi-Fi. You know, I just <laughs> – there was one Wi-Fi I could get. If I walked about a mile, I could log on and sit – I would sit on someone else's front <laughs> Just hope that they wouldn't see me and like check Twitter, check everything real quick for five minutes and bolt out. That's amazing. <laughs> did you leave? Did you did you leave little things on the porch like no, as payment I, for the Wi-Fi? Or <laughs> here's a here's a peanut butter sandwich. It was the only person who didn't have a lock on their Wi-Fi. I thought everyone had to have a lock now. I guess. We well, need... if you're in the middle of nowhere, they're like, who who's gonna yeah. be connecting to my my Wi-Fi? This okay. creeper on my front it porch. Town. It was a town of 109 people, so it was a tiny, <laughs> tiny town. I'm surprised there was Wi-Fi there at all. Satellite <laughs> Wi-Fi, actually. I was going to say, was it like dial-up Wi-Fi? Yeah, it's <laughs> You've got mail. Yeah, sorry, I, I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean to go off trail. I know we got no, more that, to talk about. I'm so happy like you did. Maybe That's awesome. I feel like things maybe have come full circle for you, Clay, because like today, with <laughs> coronavirus, I think it's kind of acceptable to – leech off of someone else's Wi-Fi in the parking lot, right? Like, that's that's not okay. Yes, exactly, 100%. He's still creeping on people's porches right now. That's actually where he is. This isn't even my house. I don't know where my house is. <laughs> the door was open, you know. I just in. He was walking around with his phone like, oh, there's an unlocked Wi-Fi. Oh, the front door is unlocked. Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm about to check the fridge. <laughs> Apparently they only have non-alcoholic drinks in that fridge. That's seltzer, seltzer. Water, baby. <laughs> Not even a hard seltzer. Yeah, no, nope. so happy. Oh All man. Right. So, 
we talked about, you know, favorite seasons and what have you, and favorite memories. So what's your favorite feature of Great American? I know some people feel like it's a certain bar, a certain restaurant, maybe the Hall of Fame. I've actually never been. Real talk. I know what? that's it's kind of a blemish on me. That's fine. Um, but what's everybody's favorite feature of Great American? I I will gladly take this first. And I it was a few years ago before I made it to the Hall of Fame. It is far and away my favorite part. Um, on you're in the Hall of Fame. What? Yes, yes. It, it, listen, listen. I'm in I somebody's Hall of Fame. Right. <laughs> um, I'm friend of the show. You guys need to make a, a Hall of Fame, and and I'll be in it. Yeah, we'll, I'll work on that section of the website. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So no, um, but seriously, going back to the Hall of Fame, it. Um, it's incredible. It was worth all of the time that we invested walking through there, experiencing everything there. Um, I, I haven't taken, my kids are, are three, so I, I haven't taken them yet. Um, but I can just imagine them loving it one day. Um, oh, they will. The second you walk in, it's so I, I think the sec if I remember correctly, the second you walk in, it's like all these bobbleheads. I'm not a huge bobblehead guy, but that, that's fine. It was still really cool. Um, but then going around to the Reds Hall of Fame where all the busts were, uh, it, that was such a cool experience. And, and so I went with one of my friends from, from Atlanta. He was up for just visiting and um, he was blown away. I mean, so the Braves, obviously they, obviously they have a ton of history themselves, but they don't have anything like this. So he was really just um, so impressed by it. And, and as was I, so if you haven't been, you have to go um, once we get through this thing. And that was before the 150 years of uniforms have been put in there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I, I'm going to second that Hall of Fame. I've been a member. Um, it's actually pretty inexpensive to be a member, and you get tickets to a game. I mean, there's all kinds of perks of being a member. Um, I actually like to go to <clears throat> off season and, like, spend a whole day. Take your time. Nobody's in there. You don't have, you know, crowds. Um, it's a really – and I actually used to work at the Kentucky Derby Museum. So I know a little thing or two about museums. And I'm telling you what, this museum is really structured well. And um, everything about it, it's so cool. It's not mu as much as a boring museum where it's just kind of like, here's some artifacts. Like, you really have to read and stuff. Like, it's interactive. And it really just tells a story um, walking through. You can go through in 30 minutes. You can go through in five hours and still come out thinking, wow, that was a great experience. I love how they have that. Uh, it's a uh, the radio booth, and there's like seven different uh, like red memories on there that you could do the play by play on. Uh, that that's a really cool feature. My brother was doing that, and he thought it was soundproof, and that nobody else would be able to hear him. And of course, the whole the whole Hall of Fame heard him and his voice squeak stuff like that. <laughs> but, uh, that's a really cool feature of the Hall of Fame. He's also uh, a Xavier fan, though, right? Yeah, he is. Well, Xavier yeah, they fan. are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I did a, for, for my dad's birthday one year, or maybe it was his father's day. I don't remember. Um, no, it was his birthday. Um, we did a tour of the stadium and they take you, you can go through the hall of fame and then they take you, um, we didn't get to go to the locker room cause it was right after the season and the players were still getting their stuff out. Um, but they take you, you know, to the VIP lounge and they take you up to the handlebar bar and they take you onto the field. They take you into the dugout, and they take you up into the radio booth, into the press booth, and they just all getting to see all that kind of stuff that you just kind of see from the field and actually get to go into it um, was really cool. I guess it's not one of my favorite. I guess it's not a feature. I guess it is a feature of the stadium. So um, I'm gonna go with that. This is just the, that tour. So if you haven't had a chance to do that tour, you should check that out. I think it's pretty inexpensive too. Yeah. All right. And now th this is a little biased because we it's where our seats were at, but the uh, I I really really like watching the game from the bleachers. Yes. yes, I enjoy the bleachers. I think the bleachers are like one of the the best things they ever added. I know like other ballparks have bleachers, whatever, but I I like be sitting out on the bleachers 
I'm not yep. cramped into a little into a seat and like had to deal with all that nonsense. And like whenever when we had them had our seats out there, you know, my wife wasn't able to go like all the time, and I would just go and sit at a day game and be you know at the time. I mean, I we had you know usually have the bleachers to yourself out there and. It's like five bucks or something too, right? And the, the tickets for them are, are ridiculously cheap. And I mean, you talking about Sun Deck, or are you talking about like oh, the, the actual upper church. left field? What? What now? You talking about Sun Deck or actually like upper left field? Upper left field. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the one, one, the one year I had the season tickets, they were in the bleachers, and it was it was great. Oh, they're fantastic. Yep. Yeah. There, I would contend that there is no better place to watch a baseball game. And then if you if you're lucky enough, you get to be one of the people who turns the K around. Get on TV, maybe. Who knows? Oh, you never know. You never know, Ed. <laughs> um, I got. I kind of had a toss up. Um, I love the Toyota Tundra that no one's ever hit. Um, so there's that. Didn't they? Wait a minute. Somebody didn't hit. last year? Didn't they? Uh, didn't they say like it was like close enough? Yeah, th- that doesn't mean anyone actually hit it. I mean to hit the to hit the actual tundra. I'm just you saying, got, man. I think you've got to hit like a 600 foot home run. No, there's there's the sign that you hit. Is right. uh, Arthur? Yeah, there's the, little, the, the, like, the, the sign. The is, sign is by the stacks. Signs. Well, yeah. yeah, there's a sign by the stacks, and then there is the actual tundra. Willie no. Mobini is going to come back out of retirement. <laughs> in whatever Mexican league he's playing in, he's not only going to hit the tundra once. He's gonna hit it twice. <laughs> I, I, I think if there's anybody that could that could probably hit the tundra, it's either Aquino or Suarez. Suarez may very well be able to hit the tundra. As long as he gets his shoulder right. That's true. Um, the other thing, though, is just the smokestacks. Um, just every time somebody hits a home run, they go off with the fire, and you can literally, if you're in right field, you feel that heat. That's like yeah. in the middle of the summer. It's crazy anyway. Like hot out there anyway but you feel that heat coming off the smokestacks but um i don't know it's just a throwback to cincinnati like with the whole steamboat in the in center field anyway um you know just kind of having hmm? do you know how bats circle the top of the steam uh the steam stacks or whatever they call those i don't know that answer is it 14 i don't know if it is yes man gts jeff (laughs) i think it's 14 they should probably they should probably add some more because Pete Rose is kind of a blemish at this point. But um, anyways, sure um, about that before I brought it up. Outside of that, uh, it's just cool, kind of having that throwback and kind of. I mean, even if you step outside the stadium, you see the the smokestacks they have on the uh, river walk right there and what have you. So um, I don't know. It's kind of cool having that literally in our stadium and kind of. You know, we don't have the arch. We don't have you know some of the things that other teams have. We don't have the history of like a Yankee stadium or a Fenway park or even a uh, um, Wrigley or anything like that. But I mean, we got some things that are, are strictly Cincinnati and that's, you know, outside of the restaurants and what have you. you know, it's cool to have that. Ed was right. There's seven on each stack. Okay. Or 14. Yep. yep. So, I mean, Aaron, to your point, man, I mean, the, the great American, um, they've made, over the years, just so many great improvements to that stadium. It's really a quality place to. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you one of the worst features of that ballpark, and it's one I got to experience this last season, um, is the Connect, the Cincinnati Bell Connect Lounge. I think is where it is, and it's that rooftop bar. Um, it's behind the seats, so you can't actually see the game at all. Um, there's just big screens up there, and people playing pool and beer pong. Um, I was like, I just want to, I want to watch the is, game. I don't want to watch these people. Is, use it. is that the one where you, you, you don't like the, the ticket includes like a, a drink and like, yeah. you can like hang out up there and, but you don't have a seat cause you're watching the game on TV while, like while you're hanging out at a sports bar. Yeah. Right. You, can come, you can come down and then you can go in like the standing room only area with your, with those seats. You don't actually get to sit down anywhere. Okay. So I did that, but it's, you're right. It's for people like us. It sucks. But I took my girlfriend and two other friends that have no interest in baseball, and it was awesome because it's like twenty bucks. You get ten dollars for a drink or food, and it's like something to keep them entertained. And then you actually do have access to like a viewing area, yeah. whatever. For certain for certain situations, more or less a ten dollar ticket. It's okay. 
Ed, I'm not going to allow any slander on those tickets, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Did your girlfriend put uh, ketchup on those hot dogs? Um, she uh, only puts ketchup on hot dogs. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> I'm listening right now. And- <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we'll move on real quick then. Um, Speaking of hot dogs. As we, right. So what's the best ballpark food? Clay, why don't you start off, bud? <laughs> It's a hot dog. This is America. It's a hot dog. And you better put every freaking thing that they offer on it and double up on mustard. I like that you looked over your shoulder to make sure you were safe. I know. I heard the door open. He's not married yet. But he <laughs> if you're not. Okay. I love playing. <laughs> This is America. It's a hot dog. <laughs> I mean, it's a hot dog. It's a hot dog, and you should eat three of them every time you go. And every time you go, the jalapenos on there, the onions, the mustard, the ketchup, sauerkraut. Have, it doesn't even matter. I mean, if they have it, whatever they have, just put it on there because they put it on there because smart people should have whatever is there. So if they offer it, just eat it. <laughs> so simple, and it's free. All that stuff's free. You can put on it, right? It's not free. Not That's why it's twenty five dollars for a hot dog. I'm gonna go to the dollar dog section. They're the size of a cheese coney over on and on right field. What? The dollar dog what section and stand in line until the game's yeah. over to get your it's one hot dog. Right. And you don't get shit. You yeah, get Jeff, I save four dollars. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's four extra dollars I can spend at the authentic. You, get, you only get ketchup when you go in that line. <laughs> yeah, there, there's nothing else. You're lucky there's a hot dog in there. <laughs> I don't. I wrote that question, but like, I guess, I guess I'm to stick with a hot dog because I don't think I've had anything other than a hot dog at the ballpark. Nachos, I I got a burger, a oh, helmet, nachos. helmet nachos. Helmet nachos are delicious. Okay, I'm going with the helmet nachos since Clay already Fry said. box. I haven't had that. Oh no, man, I have, have I, I, the, yeah. the, the funnel really fries. Did. A really yeah. underrated move that I like to make is the popcorn. Because you can eat it. It takes forever to eat it all. So you can just snack all game. And it's always like 3 or $4. Great corn rate snack. The kettle corn is so good. Yeah. No, kettle corn is, yeah. I keep Speaking reading about Fry Box and everything that Fry Box offers. And Jesus Christ, I don't know why I can't ever find a Fry Box when I'm there. Like, they're in hidden places. Like, you apparently have to wander the entire stadium to find a Fry Box. I, I don't want to have a heart attack, though. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's delicious, but I, like that, that YOLO. On, I, Yolo. I guess that's true. I mean, you know, I, I'll I'll give you that. I I enjoy peanuts. Oh at, yeah, uh, at the game. I mean, a hot dog. Hot dog should be obvious and a requirement when you walk in. Um, but peanuts. Yeah, you have to buy them outside the ballpark for a dollar from the guy with the big white cooler. Uh, you know, you got to get them there because otherwise you're paying seven dollars for a bag of peanuts. Water too. Oh yeah, water too. Um, but yeah, I, I mean peanuts. You know, and then when you got that annoying like Pittsburgh fan that's like two rows in front of you, and you just maybe uh, gotcha. maybe a couple of those shells find their way, you know, into the back of his shirt or off the top of his head or. <laughs> Sorry. Or maybe it lands, maybe it lands in his beer. Welcome to right. Cincinnati. Go back to <laughs> Yeah, so I, I I agree with everyone here, man. It's it's a hot dog and there there's I I do I do require peanuts like you, Jeff. That's that's standard. Um but the hot dog is is baseball. Um and it have it's every it's every time. Although one time I will do the cheese coney inside of the uh, slice of La Rosa's. I will try that sometime. I've heard about that. That sounds terrible. Yeah, I actually heard it's worse for you than the coronavirus. <laughs> what I've heard. I'm that. This is what I've heard. I don't know, Ed. It might be. <laughs> you have crushed before. Ed's dreams. Look at Ed. <laughs> he, he was so sad. He thought you were going to vouch for him there, that you were going to back him up. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> you told him. <laughs> buy me one at a game. I will say the the bleacher seats and one of the nice features of the ballpark is being able to bring in food that, as long as it's wrapped right. 
But I sat in the bleacher seats one time, and the guy next to me opened up a um, Tupperware container full of sushi and started eating that at the ballpark. And I had to move away from him. Oh. Yeah, I know. I right just look ahead of my face. That, that's worse than gas station sushi. That's who knows how long that's been cooking in his pocket. Sushi. Uh, it may have been. But so I, I will say I think along with like that, um, the, the section of the park, I, I've done that with with my wife and some other friends too, where you don't really watch the game. It's not really for baseball fans. So th- that's that's your sushi crowd, right? So yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, they they go for a drink, maybe sushi. They're not really there for baseball. Uh, I, I'm happy it's it's offered. You will never see me eating it. No, no. I, I do right. I do like the barbecue spot that they got out there. Yes, uh, right field. It's so yeah. good. I mean, ah. it, it's it, it it's a it's a little like for me a little high class for a baseball game. I'm looking for my hot dog and peanuts, but like I will occasionally go out there and you the know, price is right. It's yeah, like fifteen dollars, and, and you get it's not ridiculous. Yeah, you get like fifteen dollars gets yeah. you like a pulled pork sandwich, macaroni and cheese, and coleslaw. It is it is probably the most fairly priced food in the entire ballpark. Yes. That all sounds delicious right now. And, and it's usually <laughs> and, and usually even if the line is long, it is a it's a pretty quick like up there. And then yeah. and you can get like like my wife likes to get their like mixed the mixed beers that they get there, yeah. like the different line and kugels or whatever that they mix together and make. You like the lime readers? We got you. Weird things, Ed. That was ridiculous. Listen, I'm I'm drinking Natterdays. I don't I have no judgment. Actually, I need to get a drink real quick. I'll be right back. All right. So while Ed's gone, apparently I'm running the show here. Um, so we're gonna do we're gonna combine two questions um, because they kind of are the same thing. So top three Reds finish with your all time favorite Red and why? Any takers? Top three Reds. Top three Reds, all-time favorite, and why at the end? Oh. Uh, all right, I'll go. Um, number one, all-time favorite Red, Sean Casey. You uh, already have done this wrong. Okay. <laughs> you, were supposed to, you were supposed to end with your all-time favorite. Literally said that in the instructions. Oh, gotcha. Number three, um, – I don't have it. I don't have it. Number two, Imagine that. Todd Frazier. No, number three, Jay Bruce. No, let's change that up again. Sorry. Number three, Todd Frazier. Number two, Jay Bruce. Welcome and, to the show, Ed. Thank you. <laughs> and, number, and number one, I wrote the question too. And number one. Um, Both of them. Yeah, Sean Casey. Well, why? Uh, Here's why. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so I went to a game, um, and you guys remember how – maybe they still do this. They bring, like, the Little League players out on the field or, like, the little kids out on the field, and they go stand in the positions, and then the players come out to their positions, and then they'll like, sign a ball for them and then send them, send them off to their parents. All the parents – all the players are towering above these little kids. Sean Casey's over at first base with this little kid, probably five years old or something like that. And he gets down, like, on his knees, is, like, signing the ball for him, talking to him, having a whole conversation where all the other players are just like, here's your ball, see ya, go play. And he's, like, having a whole conversation with them. It just, like, gets down to his level. And that just made me a huge Sean Casey fan right there. Because I'm a softy. Sean Casey, I mean, that that's a great choice. I mean, I feel like you could easily talk him into my top three. Um, the three I had thought of um, – Kind of cliche. What 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 is this? Is that a Matt Latos bat? No, it's a Sean Casey autograph oh, bat. Okay, well, <laughs> see if you can trade it for a Matt Latos bat if you chance. I could. Uh, my top three, three Jay Bruce. Um, it was just he was like I was like that age where I was like really into it, and like when he was coming up through the system and everything, it's just like one of those deals. Two, Johnny Bench. And my favorite, Barry Larkin. Why? Um, I don't think I even have to explain why for any of those people, really. I mean, they speak for themselves. Uh, Barry Larkin was – I remember when I was really young, um, and it was just like, you know, he's just a legend. I mean, like, let the stats speak for themselves. If he could have just stayed a little bit more healthy, man. I feel like he did a horrible job on mine now. 
Oh, no worry. You did. You, you did. You, you, I think you messed it up from the jump. You did. Yes. Cheers. <laughs> um, I, I'll, I'll go next. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I think, going to do better than Ed, but I also am not going to follow the rules. Doesn't take much. So um, I, you, you were asking for top three. I'm going to give you top six just because I kind of got the three and I'm like, Ooh. but these other guys were also there. So number six, um, Jay Bruce. Jay okay. Bruce. Um, Clay, kind of like you're talking about. Just that this, this most recent iteration of, of the successful Reds, um, for me, Jay Bruce was a, a lot of, of that. And I know he wasn't everything that he – was supposed to be coming up and, and all that, but you look back on it, he was a damn good player. Yeah. Um, number five, um, Chris Rex Bex Sabo. Sabo. So I'm obviously, again, a, a little older than, than some, so um, he was a part of that 90s uh, World, Ser- World Series championship team. And he was just so cool with his Rex backs, um, you know, playing third base. He was just, he was a fighter, man. He, he was not going to give an inch. And so I, I, I really dug that. Um, it's me, number, it's <laughs> yeah. number four, um, Eric, the red, um, he's yeah. gotta be, he's gotta be in there somewhere. Uh, he was incredible. So, I mean, he's another guy you talk about. What if, you know, without the injuries, what about the AstroTurf? Have? Yeah. Damn AstroTurf. Um, so then number three, falling in line with what you guys were asking for, my man, Jose Rio. So I wanted to be Jose Rio um, when, I, when I was a kid. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, my dad didn't know I wasn't going to be 6'1", like he is. I was instead going to be 5'8", like I am. And that's being generous. Um, so he, he thought maybe I had a sports future uh, ahead of me. So, I mean, he was, you know, showing me all these guys like you know throw the ball like you know like like jose rio um showing me all these like um these these um, instead you throw the ball like a shot put i've seen it yeah yeah it really turned out really bad um so it is what it is um this is who i am so then number two though brennan phillips b phil um i such a huge fan of the way he played the game he's a huge fan of your wife Oh yeah, yeah. That's also a bit of a problem. He oh. almost, he honestly almost got knocked down a couple of notches because my wife definitely had a thing for him. May still have a thing for him, but he's not around now. It's the graybeards. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but B. Phil, man, just the way he approached the game, played it. Um, he was slick, dude. Yeah. So I think um, we need to elaborate a little bit more on that story about how he actually. Message. Oh gosh. Oh man. Okay. All right. So thanks, Aaron. Um, You're welcome. Yeah. So m- my wife and I were we were pretty early in our our dating life. So I, I you know he he never stood a chance. By the way, like I was gonna win. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Little like, Debbie's. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but she thought it would be so funny to um what's what's the ter- i'm, I'm going to sound really old um mm-hmm. slide into his dms right <laughs> <laughs> on on twitter so she does and like he engaged and but his what he said was and I, i'm guessing like you know with her with her photos that she had posted and with her being a teacher and all that stuff his response was you're not about that life um Something about little Debbies, and I'm like, <laughs> like, okay, all right. So, so that was the 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 moment. That was what he called all of his women were that, little Debbies. That was yeah, 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 yeah. So that was the moment where I really triumphed over B. Phil, and for that reason, he's really been able to stay high on my my lifelong rankings <laughs> of favorite Reds. Otherwise, he'd be dead to me completely. <laughs> So that was the story. But um, number one red, Barry Larkin. Um, so I, I wanted to throw the ball like, like Jose, but I wanted to do everything like, like Barry. Um, he, we, were, we were from Cincinnati. Um, obviously just 
you didn't know when you were watching him in 1990 on that team that he was going to be a Hall of Famer. Okay. And which is so, so like that also brings me to like Joey Votto. But like it's so cool when you reach a point where you're like, this player is like one of the greatest of all time. And you don't know that in the beginning. You don't know that sometimes in the middle. It's just, you know, because the way baseball works. So, but just watching Barry Larkin uh, wanting to to play shortstop, again, wasn't going to happen. Wasn't in the cards for me. Um, that, But Barry Larkin, by far, favorite, favorite red. Yeah, I did a horrible job on my list. Worst. Yeah. The yes. worst. You, you should have started off with Matt Latos as your number one. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead Joe alright um, so, Jay Bruce at number three um, my my wife is infatuated with him probably still is much like you know Brandon Phillips uh, but she, did she slide in his DMs though she did not slide into his DMs um, <laughs> you win yeah, so, <laughs> you win right, yeah I mean you know he he I think he, what he did here, you know, it speaks for itself. I mean, he always played hard. Number two is probably a, a little bit different than – but Ryan Friel. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, awesome. The dude, he had – when you talk about people who, like, have zero care for their body and just want to do whatever it takes, that guy. Uh, R.I.P. So, so Ryan Friel, number two. And then, I mean, I'm the same as Clay and Ron there. Barry Larkin is number one on my list. Um, I, I wore number 11 throughout my entire life, uh, you know, playing baseball. Uh, wanting, wanting to do everything that Barry Larkin did is, is how I grew up. And when I played shortstop and then I got moved over to third base, but is what it is. I flip. I would when I would catch the ball when I would get it, like a ground ball. I would flip the ball from my glove to my bare hand and throw it instead of taking the ball out of the glove. Right, and it drove every one of my coaches nuts. And they'd be like, "Why do you do that?" Well, when I go home and I watch the Reds play, Barry Larkin flips the ball from his glove to his bare hand all in one motion, and it's a thing of beauty. And when I do it, it is too. So I'm going to keep doing it. And then I think when I got to like, uh, it's probably seventh or eighth grade. My coach told me, <laughs> my, my coach told me that if I ever did it again, that I could sit on the bench and flip balls into my hand. And so, I, to, to be true, I never had an error doing it. Um, but he he told me that if I uh, continued to do it, that I could continue to do it while sitting on the bench. Um, so I, I, I stopped, stopped flipping the ball. Um, but yeah, Barry Larkin, I mean, it's just, what else can you say? You know, honorable mention though, Puig. I wish they would go get him and bring him back. I'm still not upset probably, if they do. I know it probably doesn't fit in very well with what they got going on. You know, he'd probably end up getting in a fight with Pedro Strope and, you know, we end up with no pitcher and they'd have to get rid of him, but. It's fine. It's April 15th. We can still go for him. Well, he's still available. Uh, so, in order, my, my number three is Joey Votto. Um, I can't believe nobody actually mentioned him. He is a disciplinarian at the plate. Um, he is, honestly, in our lifetimes, throughout all of our collective lifetimes, arguably the best player who's been here. Um, just in everything that he does and trying to gear up for the season, everything he does at the plate, everything he does and trying to change his position in holding the bat. Like, I don't know that there is a better player that we have ever had in this Reds organization, to be completely honest, um, as far as how much work he does getting to be who he is at the plate. Um, I don't know. He's – everything you would ever want in somebody who you're paying $300 million to, to be completely honest. Um, but yeah, he's been somebody to just show Cincinnati what baseball is. I don't know. You can't ask for more from somebody um, outside of 
talking to the media, but even then, like he gives you glimpses when he does things like, oh, I don't know, the donation of a donkey or him yes. wearing him wearing a uh, mountie outfit, yes, or just messing with fans or whatever. Having they Jim believe. Day with Jim Day. I don't like Jim Day, but that's fine. I, um, I, know, I, know, that, I know, I know, I know, wait, I know, I know. Wait. He, it's been a long time thing. I don't. I've been trying to talk him out of it for years, a decade. I feel like it's yeah. easily, easiestly the guy I could probably get on the show, but I can't because Aaron. Why don't you like Jim Day? Everything about Jim Day. Is now I I'm, like I'm kind Day. of. I'm in a way with Aaron here. I used to hate. Oh, him. I used to think he. Was, <laughs> I, I just thought he was a douche. <laughs> but, honestly, My since man. I, since I started, oh Aaron, don't get too excited. Since I started to listen to his podcast, I have kind of leveled out. I'm not ready to say I like him, but I'm not, I definitely don't dislike him anymore. He is good at what he does, but there is there is somebody who we follow on Twitter, Ed, who I, I don't know if you know who Callie is. Um, but in any case, there's somebody we follow on Twitter. She works at a uh, card shop. Sports gallery. And not out. she said that he slides into girls' DMs all the time. So there's that. I win. Anyway, um, uh, so that's the same number person that Matt Latos tried to hit on. There's that. Weird. Yep. Jim Day? No, no, the Callie. She uh, the girl she the Force Gallery over there in uh, Fairfield. Oh, Force Park. In Dallas. <laughs> anyway, um, number two would be one that no one else has mentioned either. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, um, we didn't have in here. Years. Well, you can't talk because you had a terrible top three. Anyway, um, but Ken Griffey Jr., like, I was so excited when we brought him here. I was so excited before he was even here. Um, I was so excited about the fact that his dad played here after, like, realizing who his dad was after I already knew who Ken Griffey Jr. was. Like, I didn't know who Ken Griffey Sr. was before I actually knew who Ken Griffey Jr. was. That's the age bracket I'm in. Um, so much, in fact, that I remember there was a – high school basketball game at Wynton Woods where I found out that Ken Griffey Sr. would be there and Ken Griffey Sr. Ken Griffey Sr. signed my Little League glove but I was only excited that he was Ken Griffey Jr.'s dad um, not knowing like the history of the big red machine and all that like it was just the fact that he was Ken Griffey Jr.'s dad and I'm here and I'm meeting him and all of that um but yeah, I mean, Ken Griffey Jr., like when he was here and when he got the 500, like I remember he was at 499 and I bought a ticket and left work to go to the game to hope that he would hit 500 here. Instead, he goes and hits it in effing Miami. Whatever. That's fine. Um, but no, Ken Griffey Jr. being here, like, and obviously he got hamstrung, no pun intended, by everything with all the injuries and everything. Um, we missed his glory years but it was great to have him here and it just brought a resurgence again to the fan base the reds always know what what moves to make when the fan base is moving away from the reds they will never let this fan base leave the reds and you know obviously we've seen that same resurgence here this year but um ken griffith jr would be my number two and number one like everybody else i don't even have to get into it barry larkin I mean, plain and simple i met barry larkin me too so speaking of you meeting Barry Larkin, Ed, because I think everybody already went with – everybody's answered yes? Yes. All right, cool. Um, last question I have anyway, but unless anybody has anything else. Um, have you ever had a chance to meet a Red, and do you have a good story on that meeting? So I have – I thought of a second one while we were sitting here talking, but Aaron, you probably – I'm wrong. going last. It's so good. Is it? Is it prom? No. Okay. So prom night, it was your prom, right? 2002? It, it, me and Michelle, yeah. Yeah, you had, you had gotten us a table at Montgomery Inn uh, down the river, and we got yeah. there, and the um, hostess is like, we're sorry, uh, your table's not ready. And Aaron's like getting ready to flip. He's like, oh, we, we reserved this months ago, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, well, no, we're sorry. Adam Dunn decided to come in after the game, and he wanted your table because it had a great view of the river. And so we gave it to Adam Dunn so you guys can wait. And we're like, fine, we'll wait. It's Adam Dunn. So we're sitting around, and we're looking at the cigars over by the register, 
And all of a sudden, our friend Adam, I can't think of his last name right now, field commander for marching band. Foster. Foster. Adam Foster's like, hey, Adam, what's up, man? How you doing? And I turn around, and it's – His voice sounded like that. Exactly. Uh, Turns around, and Adam Dunn is walking out of the bathroom. Um, and he starts shaking all our hands and his hand was soaking wet. I hope he washed his hands. Um, <laughs> but like I offered to buy him a cigar. I was like, Hey Adam, uh, you want to buy, you want a cigar, man? I'm getting ready to buy a cigar. He's like, no man, I can't smoke. I play sports. It's like, oh, touche. All right, fine. Um, and then he continued to take our table for like another 30 minutes after that. Um, that's the one time I met a Reds fan or a Reds player. Yeah. Um, I uh, I was pretty lucky when I was younger. Um, my best friend's dad owned the Louisville Bats, so we would do batting practice with the Bats players, me and him, and shag balls at least once a week. How are we just finding that out, Clay? Um, I I thought I'd mentioned it before, but not ever. I had met in look like, on Aaron's face. <laughs> like, I don't know if you – it's a good thing this is being recorded so that everyone can go back and you can <laughs> zoom in on Aaron's face when he's like, oh, yeah, my best friend's dad was like, you know. <laughs> Aaron was but, like – So, I had done batting practice once a week, once every couple of weeks with, I mean, Bruce Votto, Josh Hamilton, um, all the guys who are <laughs> rehab. I mean, all the pitchers. I mean, I met – I actually, like, knew Ryan Handigan pretty well. Corky Miller. I have all kinds of stories about all that. I saw Chad Moeller get traded literally while he was in batting practice. They just called him into the dugout, and next thing you know, he's gone. We took him uh, one pick ahead of Derek Jeter, by the way. Oof. And uh, But some good stories. I uh, was in the outfield shagging fly balls, and I robbed a home run from Chris Heisey, and all the players gave him shit. So Nice. That was probably – and then Corky Miller would just sit at second base with a fungo and just fuck around, never did anything, <laughs> never really did batting practice, would try to take grounders at short and turn two with, like, Daniel Ray, <laughs> like five foot five, and it was just a lot of fun. Um, seeing Josh Hamilton hit batting practice and was incredible. Nice guy, obviously has had a ton of issues. I'm not going to get into all of that, but – it was cool to meet him um, and, you know, just all – Edwin Encarnacion, I have a couple baseball bats, stuff like that, um, tons of autographs just from all that. But uh, I don't have a Matt Blatos autograph, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, have I have two. If you want one. But, <laughs> no, I, I, I have actually – okay. But my – I'd say probably the nicest guy I ever met was Ryan Hannigan, and I also think he's one of the most underrated Reds. He would have been on my top five. Um, just so incredibly smart, baseball smart, and just um, just talking to him and the way he, like, depicted the game. And he was laser-focused all the time, even in batting practice, trying to get better. And he wasn't really somebody who – was a big prospect or anything. He came in, had some great years. He put together a really long career. People forget because he bounced around. So, but he was playing just a couple of years ago and um, just a really good player for the Reds, too. He, he had a couple of big seasons, great defensive catcher put together. Um, I don't know if Jeff can tell us from his computer, but Ryan Hannigan, I think he hit close to 300 one year with the Reds. I think you're right, actually. Um. Yeah, 2007, he hit 300. 2010, he hit 300. Yeah. So, he was really underrated. Like, a lot of people forget, like, imagine if we had – It was the mullet. If we had that type of production right now from catcher, I mean, it would be great. But, yeah, he's underrated and just a phenomenal guy. Talk about Tucker like that. 11 11 years he played. Hmm. I mean, that's – And he he didn't – he didn't, he didn't de- he, he finished with uh, Colorado. Colorado, he, yeah. He didn't he didn't debut until he was twenty six. Yeah. Oh jeez. I guess that I guess that year doesn't count for batting three hundred because he only played five games. But he, when he batted <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if those were the only five games in his entire career, he'd still tell everybody it was a three hundred hitter, wouldn't he? Right. You win. That, that, that would have that would have been five more games than I've ever played. So yeah. uh, how I would in, take women home from the but bar. In, two, in 2010, he batted 300 and he played 70 games. So like, there you go. 
Yeah. And he's a career 251. 3.7 million, 2016. I'm not saying he's the very best under, catcher very in the world, but he's a damn good catcher. I mean, he's just solid, and everyone kind of forgets about him. Yeah. Ron, you ever meet anybody? Yeah. Um, when I was really young, um, Brett Boone, I, I have – I don't I don't think I still have the glove, um, but he signed my glove. Um, I don't know if he was on steroids at that point or not. Um Brett Boone. Did he get mad at you? What's that? Did he get mad at that you? Was Aaron. That was Aaron Boone. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's – are you thinking about Aaron Boone and the Savages? Uh, Brett Boone. No, I was saying – no, I was just saying, if you're on, if you're on steroids, don't think yeah. you're really yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, he, he was very nice, um, nice enough to sign my glove. Um, I mean, that – talk about Brett Boone. I mean, a, a really good offensive second baseman. So, um yeah, so that was, that was pretty exciting. And then I did meet Barry um, at the All-Star Fest. Um, oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. So um, I have a picture of him and, and, and I somewhere. Um, so I didn't – I'm not usually the kind of person who's going to go through a line to meet a person, right? But then we're walking – my wife and I are walking around um, the, the, the festivities and everything, and she's like – I'm like, oh, there's Barry Larkin. She's like, you should get in line. I'm like, not really my thing. Not really. I didn't come for that purpose, you know, all that stuff. I don't have a ball to sign. She's like, he's your favorite baseball player of all time. You're getting in the line. So got in the line, met Barry Larkin. Um, it was really awesome. I, I, I mean, of my favorite memories of Barry Larkin, that certainly wouldn't be one of them because I just met him while he was standing there. That doesn't really do much for me, but I mean, cool. I met my favorite player. I also met Tony Gwynn. I have a signed um, Tony Gwynn baseball. I know he's not a red. I, I rest in peace. Um, but I thought that was pretty cool too. I, I met him at a Walmart. Is he Walmart. dead, or did you just kill him? No, Tony Gwynn's been dead. Really? Oh my gosh. Yes. Fact checking. I have no idea. I don't even know which way to react. I literally have no idea. Did you just kill Tony Gwynn? Oh my gosh! No, he's dead. Okay. Is is anyone else? 2014, doing... June 16th, 2014. Yes. R.I.P. Tony Gwynn. Oh yeah, wow! I, I thought, oh my I gosh, thought, guys! I thought I thought Ron just killed him. Goodness. Oh, oh man. Wow. I feel less bad that Clay didn't know. Just saying. <laughs> I understand that. R.I.P. Anyway, all right, um, Jeff, you got anybody? Did you already go? I don't remember. Um, I, think, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've had, I've had the the uh, fortune. Have you pulled make... anybody over? <laughs> Ooh, good question. No, I haven't. No, uh, no. Be better, no athlete. Jeff. Are you a cop? Yeah. For real? Yeah. We talked about that at the beginning of the show. I thought I CPD. Thought I, that, but I wasn't listening to Klaus. So, Jesus, I better watch out. You never know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, so no, no I, haven't, I haven't pulled anybody over. Like working, working some details and stuff. I've run into people like Billy. I mean, run into Billy Hamilton. Um, Can't wait! Can't wait! Su- super nice guy. Incredibly nice. I mean, anytime he would show up somewhere, first place he would go is right over to the policeman. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for your, whatever, hey, nice. your service, ma'am. <laughs> All right, Ed. And then uh, Alfredo Simon met him. Big oh, pasta. He had he had a Mercedes that was chrome. The entire thing was chrome. Sounds about right. Front to back. I mean, it 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 was. I mean, it was pretty cool looking. Um, Spade Creations did it. Uh, Aroldis Chapman. Have you seen him lately? Yeah, he's jacked. Jacked. I mean, Jesus. The dude's probably gonna throw two hundred miles an hour the next time he gets on a mound. (laughs) Uh, Doctor, remove his arm. If, yeah, if he can move Especially his arm. Especially at the uh, Astros. Um, he he was actually really nice uh, when I met him as well. The girl he was with at the time was not a nice person. She was very upset, but uh, <laughs> he was cool. Um, and then Michael Lorenzen, I met him. I was at a Chattanooga Lookouts game, and they were playing the Wahoos. And it was like three bucks to get in. My um, my brother-in-law lives in Chattanooga. And so we we went to the game. And it was me and him and uh, my father-in-law were sitting in the front row. And the 
two things from that game. Like, so Jesse Winker was coming up through, through, uh, through the system at the time and was tearing the cover off the ball. And then he's in the outfield, a ball gets hit to him, and it was like a noodle arm throwing it in. I mean, like the weakest arm ever I've ever seen from an outfielder. Um, but Michael Lorenzen was, got put in. I mean, he, I mean, he's a pitcher. We all know what he can do as, at the plate. He gets put in as a pinch hitter in this game. And he's like, I mean, you know, we're maybe a little bit intoxicated sitting there and we're talking to him like, hey, we're from Cincinnati, you know, whatever. And on the back and he's like, look, I'm just a pitcher. I don't know why they put me up here and proceeds to like rip a double. And, uh, <laughs> you know, like, and, it, and his, ar- his arms are also like this big around yep. and, you know, like. Well, yeah. Hulk Hogan, seventeen inch pythons. The, the right. Um, he's he's he, he's enormous. Um, so yeah, the, those are like some of the, the little ones I've met. Uh, Tony Perez used to come into my mom's work. She worked at a dentist office, and he would. Uh, that's the dentist that he went to uh, when I was growing up. He always come in, and literally he would like, but like if we were there with my mom or whatever, like whatever we had with us, he would just sign it. Like I, w- I wouldn't, wouldn't ask him to sign anything, just because it's like. Uh, but he would, you come over and like, uh, baseball been very, very good to me, and like <laughs> sign it. Uh, nice guy, real nice guy. Cal Daniels met him. Uh, he was like dating one of the other hygienists or something at the dentist office. He was. <laughs> I um, uh, I actually. <laughs> Aaron, before you go, I did want to eat. Jeff, you said Chapman. I, this is a great story. I totally forgot to tell you all this. Chapman shows up in Louisville to pitch. It's like his first week in Louisville. I'm so uh, excited for whatever you're about to say, Clay. And I, I probably have all kinds of these stories. I just can't. I don't of. doubt that. Chapman shows up in Louisville, right? He just signed his big contract. He has literally no idea how to speak English. He has no idea how to do anything. Like he, He's just like, go to Louisville and pitch. Okay. So this delivery truck comes like late to the stadium and they're like, yeah, I have a delivery here for Chapman. And everyone's like, well, like a role to Chapman? Like, yes. Okay. Well, we don't really know where, you know, this is just like the stadium worker, right? So it's a Lamborghini. Jeez. Chapman orders a custom Lamborghini to the stadium. Him and his cousin come out to get in it. They don't know how to drive stick. Can't get it out of the parking lot. Just bought the car. Doesn't even know how to. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the same Lamborghini that he, he was stolen doing the car. One hundred seven. Didn't he get pulled over in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Once he 100%. figured out, I guess how to drive it. Yeah, well, possibly not. So, I mean, oh my gosh, the, the guy <laughs> throws a baseball like you know, one hundred six miles an hour. I think as long can... as long as you can get it out of first gear, you're good. Yeah, well, that's true. Well, he just he, – I guess he couldn't even do that because him and his cousin fooled around with it for a little bit then just, ah, we're not going to do it. Just left it there overnight, and I guess they figured it out the next day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, my story is about Billy Hamilton and um, one of the friends of the show, Brandon Kunkel. So, <laughs> we are down in Louisville at the Bats game for uh, Brandon's bachelor party. And we are in right field where there are a bunch of picnic tables that you can reserve. And you go and sit there and you can literally yell at anybody on the field and they will respond to you because they are in the minor leagues and they don't give a shit. They literally are just like, what's up? So Billy Hamilton is up and coming at this point. And uh, every time he catches the ball in center field, we're like, Billy, Billy. So uh, at some point he comes over to us and he's like, hey, guys, what do you guys keep yelling at me for? You guys keep yelling my name. I'm just, I'm trying to out of here. I'm not, I'm not. You know how fast he talks, uh, as fast as he runs. So we're like, yo, it's cool. Um, we're just here for a bachelor party. You are like the next big guy. Um, you know, we're just hanging out. We're not sober. And he's like, where are you guys going after this? I, I'll meet up with you guys. Where are you guys going after this? And we're like, um, we are going to help me out here, Clay. What is the bar? Street that five. You, 
it used to be in uh, Four Street Live, but it, it used to be at the, uh, when you walk into the one entrance, it's right under the uh, cowboy bar where you ride the bull. Um, the PBR the, bar? It, it's right underneath where PBR bar, but it's not there anymore. Um, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not any help. I don't know anybody. In, the locals don't go to the. Of course, you're not. Live. Come on now, you know better. I know. I learned that. I go to New we the, I learned that <laughs> when we went to the Derby. Anyway, um, Annie's maybe. I don't know. Anyway, um, so we go to whatever bar that is, and uh, sure shit, Billy Hamilton meets us there, and proceeds to buy everyone um, a shot of Patron. And he's like, what are you guys going after this? Uh, I don't know, Billy. Where are we going after this? I got a place. All right. So we end up at the strip club. And, yep, we ended up at a strip club with Billy Hamilton. That's um, awesome. That's a great story. It is a great story. <laughs> I bought him a, I believe, if I can remember correctly, I bought him a cranberry and vodka. Um, and he bought the groom-to-be and his father, who unfortunately is no longer with us, um, he bought them each a dance. So it was a phenomenal night. Um, Billy Hampton just treated us right in his city, and uh, every stripper there knew Billy Hampton. <laughs> he's a, he's a really is- nice. He, he's a really nice guy. I mean, like literally every time I've met him, I, I did challenge him to a race. Um, he said that his contract wouldn't allow it, so. No. Your wife went out with that ankle. Hey, guy, that is, that story is not <laughs> told a lot. For another podcast. I, I literally get in trouble every time you tweet something about that. Oh, every anniversary? <laughs> God, Ed. That, that hey, was, but that's, that's my favorite meeting a red story. Um, more so, way more so than Ed and Adam Dunn. Brett and Jeff, do you guys? Brett, sorry, Aaron and Jeff, do you guys remember my uh, my Dallas Lato story? Yes. Yes. I don't okay, know if you I should. <laughs> so I yes. um, so, so my, my brother and I are going. <laughs> this is so sad. Um, we're going to the Reds game because it's uh, Matt Lato's bobblehead night, and I wanted a bobblehead. And we're right um, in between the stadium and US Bank Arena, like right down there on the on the street. And this black uh, Ford Raptor pulls up alongside of me. And I was like, damn, that's a nice car. So I go take a picture of it because, you know, I take pictures of cars. Paper. And the lady driving it uh, turns and looks at me. And I was like, oh, crap, she caught me. So I put my phone down and I just look straight forward. And I'm like, no, I'm gonna, no eye contact. And actually, that's I knew the first it was. Time you got caught taking a picture of someone's car. You can tell. <laughs> Uh, actually, I knew it was Matt Latos's truck. I just didn't know it was Dallas driving it. And this is so, also equally creepy. How did you even know that? Because I knew he had a Raptor. No one, whatever. Anyways, so I get down to the stadium, and we walk to the stadium, and I'm in line. We pick up our tickets at Will Call, and I look at my phone, and I have a text message from Aaron, and it says, "Please tell me she's not talking about you." And I said, "What are you talking about?" Then I open up Twitter, and there's Jeff. There's a there's a tweet from Dallas Latos, and Jeff has tagged me in it and said basically almost the same thing, like, please tell me this wasn't you. And I look at it, and she, she said, to the fan who just took a picture of me taking a bite out of my granola bar or whatever it was, I hope you got a beautiful picture. So I, I tweet back to Jeff and Aaron, and I'm like, yeah, that was that was definitely me. Um, I was trying to get a picture of the car, and I got a picture of her apparently. And Ed's looking to sell some Matt Lato stuff, so I got some stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> maybe Dallas will buy it from you. Listen, Ed's gonna go to the grave with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ed's just got like nine baseballs and bats and a helmet. And a picture. It's the worst. I hate that picture. Oh my God. I hate that. Throw picture. that away. <laughs> Ed, my God. Hey, ne- next time we do this, I, w- I just want to sh- Ed to show us all the shit he has down there, and just how much of it's Matt Latos. Oh, dude, there's all kinds of shit down Ed? here. Oh uh, no, I don't want to see it right now. Not right now. No. So, so, like, 
uh, 90s uh, World Series ring all night? All right. So does anybody who was – we've asked all of our questions. Does anybody actually have any questions they wrote down or that they came up with while we were doing this? Uh, I think we uh... – Clay, you're a writer. Come on, man. I think uh, – what, what? We're sitting about two hours of content right here. We're yeah. now 45 minutes, yeah. It's yeah. a Joe Rogan show. I, 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 I'll save – I'll have some. Next time we do something like this, I'll come with some heat. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Just, I'm just mostly going to make fun of that, but whatever <laughs> you want. Did you check this out, though? Oh, God. I thought you were <laughs> – Oh, is that a banana phone? That's the banana phone. It's a banana. Oh, signed uh, by Marty. Signed by Marty. Whoa. Yeah, I that's... did stand in line to get a picture with Marty and uh in Thank you. I at, at one of the uh Reds Fest. That was good. I stood outside the player's garage to get that autographed. And what happened the one time you stood in the player's garage? What? Your... With you... Parker. You that was a time. Her? No, there was a weird time where you stood in the player's garage and they told you to leave. No. Wasn't there? That never happened. Where Parker was, you, like, you were trying to get an autograph for Parker and they were like, no, that's for you. Like, no, man. Oh, um. Here it is. Uh, Castillo wouldn't <laughs> sign for me. No, what? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, oh yeah. All of a sudden now, do you remember? It? <laughs> this is horribly embarrassing. Never mind. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I do re- what I do remember about that is... Um, Parker was like three months old, and he's like, yeah, it's for him. Last year, he was... How old is my kid? Uh, he was five. Um, <laughs> no, but Clay's boy just drove right past me. I got a little boy sitting out here, five years old, trying to get autographs, and here comes Derek you, you, never running past, like speeding past us in a Audi R8. Hell yeah, that's how he rolls. I don't blame him. Did he have a? Did he have like a mustache just drawn on the uh, on the hood of it? That big thing. Oh, that would be sweet. I do have actually a question. I did think about this at some point during the, this entire thing. Um, and this goes all back to like when they bring baseball back this year. If in fact it comes back, do you think that they expand rosters for the for like the the duration of the season? I mean, if it comes, you're going to be playing double headers. Like if they're playing double headers all the time, yeah, I think you have what to. Is, what do they What do they expand it to? Thirty? Do they just go to like thirty players? And I mean, I don't. Clay, you're you're the um, major league uh, writer. Clay's like, thanks for the put me on the spot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> only thing I've even heard of it would be that they would expand rosters. Um, the number, I don't really know, but it would be less than 30 um, or th- 30 or less. But it would pretty much be um, due to the amount of games that they have to play trying to keep players healthy. But even then, I mean, all because you have 30 players does not mean that you're going to rotate them the way that you should. It means you have 30 to play, but – if a manager realizes, oh, shit, like what if we only have 100 games this year? Well, each game ca- counts more than when you have 162. So why would right. you, even mm-hmm. though you have more players, why would you necessarily utilize them the way that the structure of having more players would, would be, if, the, if that makes sense? You know, if I have 100 games, I have to win, you know, 56 games or something, you know, whatever the number may be, why would I give this guy the day off even though I have more, you know, I have three first basemen now. Well, who yeah. cares? I only want to use one because each game means so much. So, well, like, I would think that I would think that the but, rosters would expand more to pitchers, pitchers? because you would well, need Yeah, yeah. yeah. There there would be more pitchers. I I just, you know, throw out an example of sure. how strategy would be used. It would probably be a lot of like um as as Aaron said, you know, pitchers, but then, like, late game subs, defensive subs, pinch runners, you know, stuff to slow down the game that they want to avoid as well, so. Right. So, you're going to extend the game for that. Yeah, right? with all this, yeah. But, fellas, that's about all the time I have tonight. I got I to gotta wrap it up. I have an early morning tomorrow. So do I, but it's right back oh. here in the seat. <laughs> yeah, I have to go into work tomorrow. Yeah, I have to drive drive to Louisville. I, I live in Lexington now. I just moved, so I actually have to drive to Louisville in the morning. So that sounds horrible living in Lexington. It is what it is, I guess. 
Lexington's <laughs> a nice place. Yeah, it's fun. Well, yeah. Thank you, Clay. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Ron. Amir Garrett, we miss you. Um, oh, 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 Amir Garrett did a short interview for me. Uh, real quick. Uh, I asked him what his favorite restaurant was in Cincinnati. He said Prima Vista. And I asked him what his favorite car was, and he said uh, Range Rover. So that's our interview Those with the questions you asked. You're a terrible interviewer. Oh, I asked uh, a lot more, but that's the ones he answered. Amir Garrett did tweet during this, and we know he had time on his hands. But either way, uh, thanks, guys. It was fun as hell just coming on for two hours and bullshitting about baseball. Uh, I know we all miss it, but, I uh, mean, I'll, I'll do this as often as y'all want to. It's fun just, you know, coming in here, bouncing ideas off each other about baseball structure, then talking, you know, me- memories and just sitting around. It's kind of like watching. It's n- the next best thing to watch the game, so I appreciate you, you all. Yeah. This was That'll a- be the show. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Well, I'm, I'm serious, though. Hit me up on MLB The Show on PlayStation because uh, Amir I have Garrett, nothing else to do. Hey, Amir Garrett has been playing in that players tournament on Twitter. I know, I know, and I didn't he even get to talk Trevor about May the, the other day. Watch that. I didn't, even, those... I didn't even get a chance to talk about the uh, the OOTP tournament that uh, uh, C-Trent was doing where it's like a live simulation and he's like helping somebody from the athletic do. But next time, Ed, next time. Got it. All right. Well, hey for Ed and myself and Jeff and Clay and Ron, say what you got to say before we say goodbye. See you later, guys. It was a lot of fun. Appreciate I'm you guys putting this together. Yeah, for sure. Anytime in the uh, future, just let me know. Jeff, thanks for keeping us safe, man. Do what I can. You're on the front line, buddy. Our husband. Jesus. All right. For that, we are out.